What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again. And as you may be aware, the 100% light hash rate unlock has come out. Pretty much every miner supports it, from T Rex miner to LOL miner to NB miner. Today, we're going to go over the overclocking settings for the RTX 3080 Ti. While you may have watched my live stream and already gotten these applied, I wanted to create individual videos for reference in case you need to look it up. And this was obviously also requested by you guys in the community to basically make this easy for you guys to find. So we're going to get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. Purchasing mining equipment online can be dangerous. With all of the fake storefronts and scams, it can be hard to find a reliable source. That's why when BT Miners reached out for a channel sponsorship, I started by verifying that ordering and delivery went smoothly with a purchase of my own. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners is a trusted source by both asicminervalue.com and CryptoMinder.com. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code FREESHIPPING2021 for free shipping on your order. Welcome back. So first things first, let's go over the specifications. Now I'm not gonna bore you to death with a whole readout of the entire specifications because today we're really focused on memory and that's because these overclocking settings are for Ethereum specifically. So ET hash and they will apply to ETC hash and a little bit less to ergo, which we'll be covering later, uh, we'll be covering the ergo. That being said, let's get into it and let's tell you guys what sets this apart. And it's really going to be its memory configuration. As you see here, it has a memory size of 12 gigabytes. And this is significant because as opposed to the RTX 3090 or 3090 Ti, which are already unlocked, it only has 12 gigabytes. While this may seem as a negative at a first glance, it really is not. It's a positive. And the reason for that is on the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti, there are memory modules on the rear of the PCB. And that means that you don't have any active cooling on half of your memory modules for the 3090 and the 3090 Ti. As opposed to that, on the 3080 Ti, you don't have that issue. All of the memory modules are gonna be actively cooled on the front of the PCB, where the core is, as well as the heat sink and the fans, etc. The positive here, where it gets interesting, is that the bandwidth is pretty close to, of course, the bandwidth on the 3090 and 3090 Ti at 912 gigabytes per second. That's supplied through a 384-bit bus connecting the GDDR6X, which is faster memory than, say, like GDDR6 on a 3070. We'll get into the 3070 Ti and the 3060 as well later on, but... This is good news. Like I said, what this means is you have essentially the mining performance of the 3090 without the need to cool the memory modules on the rear of the PCB. And this does end up resulting in, with the 100% light hash rate unlock, essentially 3090 and 3090 Ti hash rate performance. And this is amazing. In fact, it's even more stable thanks to, of course, the memory modules not having to be cooled on the back of the PCB. So what are the hash rates? Well, on Ethereum, once you plug it in and just leave it at stock settings, it's okay. You're looking at 105 to 110 mega hash a second, depending on the make and model and out of the box settings and so on. The problem here is that your power goes through the roof. Now, for my particular test setup, we have a kilowatt hooked up to an 850 watt gold rated power supply that is powering both the riser and the GPU separately from everything else. That gold rated power supply could be upped in efficiency to, of course, a platinum rated, and then you could get even more efficiency if you went to 200 to 240 volts as opposed to the test that we had for the 120 volts on my particular testing setup. With that setting, at the kilowatt, we were seeing 450 watts. That's not going to do it. We need to get more efficient. So it was time to get in and overclock. The first step I usually go with with overclocking is just testing out the memory. How high can we push the memory? And in this particular case, it ended up being pretty high. We were able to go to plus 1750 megahertz, which resulted in 
a clock of 11,001 megahertz on the memory. And we did this with MSI Afterburner. You can plug these settings into, of course, your Hive OS settings as well, separate. It's gonna be somewhere around 2,600 megahertz, something like that. Now, with NB Minor 41, it wasn't as stable with these settings. However, once we have gotten more upgrades, uh, two light hash rate unlock miners, we are seeing pretty good stability, at least in my experience at this time. It's running at the farm on Hive OS with a high memory overclock, and it is in a server case, so we do have some server fans blowing on it. It's very hot at the farm, and I'm not always hitting the full overclocks. Once you do that and lock it in, though, and depending on your cooling setup, and if you're just mining at home, you should be able to see 126.6 mega hash a second on Ethereum. Now that's still at 450 watts. So now we need to get that dialed in. And here's where things get interesting because the 3080 Ti can actually operate on the core at a much lower voltage than say a 3090 or a 3090 Ti or even lower voltage than the 3070 Ti. However, it still is just a lot of cores. That being said, what we were able to do is get down to 787 millivolts utilizing the curve editor in MSI Afterburner. If you want a guide on utilizing curve editor, uh, let me know and we'll go ahead and do that. And now basically it allows you to lock the core voltage by selecting a voltage point, sliding the slider on, of course, the GPU clock rate, and then hitting the L button and it locks it all into place. While running at 787 millivolts, we're able to hit 1455 megahertz. This allows us to maintain the 126 meg mega hash a second while also reducing the power consumption and basically not affecting the performance of the card when it comes to mining ET hash and ETC hash. This results in dropping the power consumption down to 336 watts at the wall, once again on a gold rated power supply and 120 volts. Pretty impressive stuff. Of course, if you are getting your efficiency even further, basically take 20% off of that, about somewhere around there, somewhere between 10 and 20%, depending on platinum rating, 240 volt, and so on. And you're really looking at from the wall, 280 watts once you've put it into a mining environment specifically, right? So once again, platinum rated power supply, 240 volts. That's fantastic numbers, 126 mega hash a second at like 280. Now for the calculations on profitability, revenue, et cetera, I did stick with the worst case scenario, saying you're on a 120 volt circuit at your house with you know a gold rated power supply to be fair and calculate ROI, et cetera, as accurately as possible. Remember, always take these numbers and plug them into what to mine and various hash rate calculators yourself to check the current profitability. This will only be valid as of the release today, which is going to be uh, May 18th. So this is May 18th. Things are gonna change, you know, and we'll go from there. But we have it pulled up in what to mine for you guys to take a look at. As you can see, we have it calculated in for ET hash and ET hash 4G, which has been kind of rebranded to ETC hash. That being said, we have it calculated out. And on Ethereum, you're looking at $3.02 a day before power. That's going to be your revenue. And in profit, we're looking at $2.21 a day. That's with a $0.10 cents a kilowatt hour cost. So make sure you come in here and adjust your cost for your particular uh electrical cost, and then you can accurately calculate this out for yourself. We just use the default of 10 cents a kilowatt hour to make sure that everything is uniform. On Ethereum Classic, you're looking at $1.82 a day in revenue with $1.01 a day after power. Now, if we take Ethereum, we have to keep in mind that the merge is coming soon and this may not last forever, right? So it's hard to calculate this out, but theoretically, if you went ahead and got one of the price listings from Amazon, let's say, for an RTX 3080 Ti at, let's see, this one's about 1279, right? Which seems to be one of the standard prices. You could get a little lower, maybe 1259, somewhere around there. But let's just take 1280 
and divide that of course by the 221 in profit after power from 10 cents a kilowatt hour and you're looking at an ROI of 578 days. Yes, that's over a year. It's not quite two years. And so, you know, it's looking pretty good if you didn't have to worry about the merge. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Should you purchase an RTX 3080 Ti? It's really up to you. Right now, of course, there is the market kind of taking a dip. There's a lot of questions surrounding the merge and so on. But if you already have a RTX 3080 Ti, hopefully these overclock settings help you get them dialed in for your particular setup and you generate some more revenue with your cards. However, the positive here, once again, I'm really going to harp on it. You don't have the memory modules on the rear of the GPU and in a mining setting, this is huge. I have much more stable numbers off of the RTX 3080 Ti now that we have stable miners for light hash rate unlock 100% and it's much better than trying to cool my RTX 3090s to the point to where I am willing to just go out on marketplace, which I have done and just put up the 3090s for trade straight across for a 3080 Ti and just swap those out because they're just easier to run. And that's a lot cheaper than going through and trying to immersion cool or add copper, that sort of thing. Even adding copper to the rear of the PCB, while it does help a lot, you know, still isn't near the cooling performance when you have actively cooled memory modules. It's just the way it is. Hopefully you found this video helpful, entertaining, whatever. Make sure you hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell. Remember, we moved the clips for the Crypto Mining Show over to a new channel. We'll have that linked down below in the description for you. It's also on the main YouTube page. That means that we have right now the Mining Show in the morning and one dedicated video in the evening. And so you will be getting new content no matter what on this channel. You won't have any repeat content issues going on here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.